Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So to solve the problem, find all duplicates in an array. I wanna quickly mention I haven't uploaded for the last several days like the daily leak code problem and that's because I had already solved those problems in the past and had already uploaded a video for them. So in case in the future you don't see me upload a video, it's probably because I already have one. So we're given an integer array nums of length n and they give us an interesting guarantee that every single number in the input is gonna be in the range from one to n, where n is the size of the array. So that's interesting. Why, why is that even relevant to the problem? Well, let's continue reading. Every single integer in the input either appears exactly once or exactly twice. So think about it already. Like let's say n is equal to four. We're given an array of size four. We have four slots here. It's possible every single number only appears once and the numbers have to be in that range. So one possibility would be something like this, one, two, three, four. Now they also say sometimes a number might appear twice. So think of it like this, one, two, three, three. So in this example, not every single number in that range is actually present in the input array. So that's another observation to make. All we wanna do is return an array of all of the integers that appear twice, if there even are any in the first place. Okay, that's not too difficult. I can think of two pretty easy solutions to do that, but there is a constraint over here. Our solution has to run in linear time and constant space. My two solutions don't satisfy that. The two solutions though might help you arrive at the more optimal solution. So let's quickly go through them. The first is, since we're only looking for duplicates, right? We can have kind of a two pointer method. We can do nested for loops, right? So we can compare every single pair of elements. So check, this is a one. Is there any other one that shows up in the input array? Nope, okay, this is a two. Is there any other two that shows up in the input array? Nope, and here there's a three. Is there any other three that shows up? Yes, there is. So this is an N squared solution, but it does work. Constant space, that's the good thing. It's constant space, but not efficient enough. The other solution is to detect duplicates in an array, you can imagine a useful data structure would be a hash set. So this way we iterate once over the input and we check, okay, one, has one already been added to the hash set? Nope, so let's add it to the hash set. Next, check two, is it already in the hash set? If it is, then we found the duplicate, but right now it's not, so let's go ahead and add it. And next three, it's not added yet, so we add it, and then three again, oh, finally we found it, the duplicate is already present in the hash set, therefore this is a duplicate. So then in terms of our result, which is an array, we would go ahead and append three to that array and we reach the end of the input, so this would be our result. So the problem with this is that clearly the memory, like even though we're iterating once, which is probably what we wanna do for the uh, optimal solution, we have extra space. And what's the size of that extra space gonna be O of N? So that's a problem, but, 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 think about this. This is the problem solving aspect. Our hash set, we need O of N extra space. And coincidentally, the input array is of exactly size O of N. Here's where a little bit of intuition comes in from the fact that I've seen similar problems as this before. If you remember any problems like this, definitely mention them in the comments. I think that will be helpful for people because I don't remember them off the top of my head. We need O of N extra space. Is there any way we can kind of augment this solution instead of using the hash set? Can we use the input array as extra memory? It's theoretically possible. Not only that, but can we use this constraint that was given to us that doesn't really seem relevant to the rest of the problem. Can we use this constraint to arrive at the optimal solution? Yes, we can, because every number is guaranteed to be in the range uh, in this example from one to four. So what we can say is that for each number, one, two, three, four, if we have seen one, we want to mark it visited. How can we do that? Well, we can map one to index zero. We can map two to index one, three to index two, and four to index three. So now we have a one-to-one -one mapping with the input array 
as well as each possible number that could show up. So now we have that. How do we use that to our advantage? Because of course, like if we try to overwrite values in the input array, like for example, if the first value here was a three and I want to say, okay, three is marked visited. We know three maps to index two. How do I mark it visited over here? Do I put some special character there? Because we don't want to overwrite the array. If we are iterating over this array from left to right, we don't want to overwrite this position. So what do we do? Well, we do something pretty clever. Instead of changing the value, we just change the sign. We preserve the value. We mark this as negative. So let me show you what I mean. It'll make complete sense after I quickly run through it, but I'm gonna quickly change this example to make it more interesting. Now we actually have two duplicates in the input. What we're gonna do is iterate over this from left to right, we see a three. We wanna somehow mark that this three has been visited. So we're gonna go to our mapping. We're gonna go three maps to two. And by the way, this mapping is pretty simple. Like I'm not gonna create a data structure for this because you can see that the pattern is that uh, every value is just gonna be decremented by one to get where that value would be marked as visited. So for three, if we wanna mark three as visited, we will go to index two in the input array. We're gonna put a little negative sign over here. Now we're pretty much done with this position, by the way. So now we're gonna move to the next value. But knowing that values now in the input could be negative, even though all values originally were positive, what can we do? Well, every time we look at a value, we can take the absolute value of it just in case. This time we don't need to, it's positive three, but just in case, because next time it's gonna be negative two. We will need to take the absolute value in that case. So we're gonna always take the absolute value. It doesn't hurt us to do that. Now, once again, I'm going to see three. Before I mark it visited this time, we're gonna follow the, kind of the same idea we did with the hash set solution. I see it's already been marked visited. I can mark it visited again, and I guess that's what I'll do in my solution. It doesn't really matter, but before I even do that, I'm gonna see it's already negative, it's already been visited, and this is the second time I'm seeing it. So in our result, let's go ahead and add three to the result. Okay, great. Next position, we're at this. Whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't really matter. We'll take the absolute value regardless. We'll have a two. We want to map this to index one, right? Two minus one is equal to one. So that's where it's gonna be mapped. And now we're gonna say this is positive. So we haven't seen a two yet, but now we have. So let's go ahead and mark it negative. Next value is two once again. We're gonna look over here, it's already negative. Therefore, we've seen a two before, so let's go ahead and add it to the result. So this is gonna be the result for this example. If you're still not convinced that the solution works, I highly recommend you go through a few more examples. You'll quickly find that it does for pretty much all possible edge cases. So now I'm gonna go ahead and code it up. You can see that we iterated over it once, that's O of N time. And since we're using the input memory as extra space, it's technically constant space uh, extra at least. Okay, let's code it up. First, I'm gonna do declare the result and then we're gonna return it. It's gonna be an array, but before we return it, we of course have to fill it in with all of the duplicate elements. So what I'm gonna do is iterate over every number in the input array. We know that theoretically some of them could be negative. So let's go ahead and just take the absolute value of it before we try to do anything fancy. We want to mark N as visible. The way I'm doing that is by taking n and mapping it to some index uh, in the input array, not the result, the input array. We're doing that like this. So for nums, n will go at the index n minus one. And to mark it visited, mark it such that we've seen this before. Let's just, in Python, you can just kind of take the negative of it like this, or in other languages, I think you can uh, multiply it by negative one. There we go. But before we mark it visited, let's try to ask ourselves, has this already been visited? How do we know if it's been visited? If it's already negative. So if nums of n minus one is negative or even equal to zero, well, I guess it's not possible for it to be equal to zero. So let's uh, stick with the negative idea. So if it's less than zero, and that's because we're guaranteed that every value in the input is positive. So uh, making it negative will definitely make it less than zero. If it's this, then we've seen n before. So let's go ahead and say result.append n. There you go. That's the solution. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.